Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palani Panwanikam. In this video, we're going to talk all about heartburn. What is heartburn? What are the tests that is used to diagnose heartburn? What are the simple steps that you can use to prevent heartburn? My friend Saravana Kumar is like, hey, you've been talking about weight loss for all this long. You are a gastroenterologist. You need to talk about gastroenterology related disorders. For the first time ever in his life, he has given me a very good suggestion because I've not been talking about GI related disorders at all. Let's dive deep into it. So what is GERD? Gastro stands for stomach, esophagus stands for food pipe, reflex disease is reflex of contents from the stomach into the esophagus. We commonly call this as heartburn. My friend Saravana Kumar gets heartburn once in every three months. Whenever his neighbor buys a business class ticket, buys a Disney vacation or buys a Tesla car. So when you eat something, the food goes from the mouth into the food pipe, gets into the stomach. Right in the junction of the food pipe and the stomach, there is a valve called lower esophageal sphincter muscle, otherwise called LES. So this muscle actually acts as a door. Whenever you eat food, it goes through the esophagus into your stomach and the food cannot come back up into the esophagus again because this door closes. So when this door or this muscle is not working properly and it is not closing, that is where the problem starts. This is like people getting into the elevator and going upstairs with the door open. There is no automated voice machine that says, please close the door to close the LES. So this door is not closing correctly because we have opened our mouth door to incorrect foods. So when this door is not closing properly, what can happen? Acid can come up into the esophagus causing heartburn. The actual food contents can actually regurgitate from the stomach all the way into the esophagus and the acid can even travel all the way up to the back of the throat causing sore throat and your allergic symptoms can get worsened as well. And that's why most of the symptoms are worse after meals and after lying down because when you lie down, the door is wide open. My patient Aragya Sami has a heavy meal and takes a nap by lying down in the office lounge. He develops so much heart burn that will trigger the office fire alarm. So why is this door not closing? When we were born, the doors were closing properly. There were no reflex problems at all. But in due course of time, there has been increased intra-abdominal pressure. When there is more pressure in the stomach, it pushes the door to open so that all the stomach contents can come back into the foot pipe. If you think about it, one most important factor for increased intra-abdominal pressure that we have been talking about in our channel is belly fat. Anything that cause pressure in the stomach can cause heartburn. That's why pregnant women most of the times will have heartburn because of the increased pressure because of the pregnancy. Same concept applies when you eat heavy meal. The larger portion of the meal creates that pressure opening the door. Other factors include lying down right after a meal, alcohol, smoking, excessive fried foods. In few people, certain triggering factors like chocolate, onion, garlic, all these specific items can also trigger heartburn in few patients. Listing all these reasons for heartburn, I asked my loyal subscriber Subramani, what is the reason for your heartburn? He said, except for pregnancy, I would have selected all the above. So how common is this heartburn or GERD? As a gastroenterologist, I can tell you every other patient I see, there is some element of heartburn at a different level of severity. And I strongly believe that this is because of the increase in the abdominal adiposity or the belly fat, because the increased pressure is pulling down the esophageal sphincter muscle and increasing the acid exposure. In addition to this, just the presence of belly fat suggests that there is increased inflammation in the body and that itself is a risk factor for reflex disease as well. If you take any disease, most of the time it will come down to your belly fat. And that is why this channel has been focused on reducing your belly fat. To all my patients who are coming to my office with heartburn, I prescribe acid suppression medication and I give my channel link to subscribe every. So why are we worried about this? Here and there heartburn is not a big deal, right? The reason that this sometimes can be concerning is that if you have heartburn on a regular basis for more than five years, 10 years, the acid exposure in the lower esophagus keeps increasing, causing damage of your lower esophagus. Think like acid is eating up your lower esophagus, causing inflammatory changes, and that could be a precancerous condition called Barrett's esophagus. And if this keeps happening for like 15 years, 20 years, this could 
potentially turn into esophageal cancer. Does this mean that every heartburn patient is going to get esophageal cancer? Absolutely not. The risk of precancerous changes increases only when the symptoms are long and severe. So that's why when we see a patient with heartburn for more than 5 to 10 years, we recommend doing an upper endoscopy, which is a camera test that goes through your throat to look into your esophagus to actually see how much damage has been happening in the lower end of the esophagus. And a cool thing is, we can also see inside the stomach about what you ate. My friends, I don't know saying, I ate chicken fried rice yesterday, da. I'm not feeling well. Can you do an endoscopy to look into the stomach to see whether the chicken fried rice is still there so that I can get a refund from the restaurant? So we talked about why there is heartburn and what is the risk of having a heartburn for a long time. Now let's talk about how to prevent or treat. So number one, if we decrease the pressure inside the abdomen, the door is going to close, so you're not going to get heartburn. How are we going to decrease the pressure in the abdomen? By decreasing the belly fat, by eating small and frequent meals and not eating like two buckets of biryani at the same time. My Bengali friend Abhijit Chakraborty is saying, I will never get heartburn because I'm not going to be pregnant. I said, hey, you already look like you're pregnant, right? So the first thing that you should do is to decrease your belly fat. So follow our channel. If fasting is something that you like, try to adopt the technique or any kind of weight reduction technique that will decrease your belly fat, will improve your heartburn significantly. And number two, slow down and eat smaller meals rather than gulping everything at the same time. Nowadays, more people are eating in the driver's seat in the car than the dining table. I saw my patient Aro Kesami at a red light signal. We both stopped at the same time. At the red light, he was eating a big sandwich and when he saw me, he put the sandwich down. This is where a simple solution like mindful eating is going to help your heart burn significantly. Sit down when eating, slow down, chew properly, do not focus on anything else. That 5-10 minutes, just focus on the food. You'll be amazed by the amount of response that you're going to get. One place where mindful eating is almost impossible is at a marriage dinner hall where people stand behind you looking at your mouth and you're expected to gulp all the variety in one shot so that you can leave and they can come and sit. And number three, eating close to bedtime. Exactly same thing that we have been repeatedly emphasizing in the channel. If you eat around sunset, around 7 p.m., 7.30 and if you go to bed around 10, 10.30, your heartburn symptoms are going to go down significantly. As we have been emphasizing, your dinner has to be the lightest meal of the day and give your stomach some time to digest at least two to three hours before you go to bed. Instead, we eat heavily, we sleep, and we wake up three hours after in the middle of the night to eat snacks which was kept at one arm distance before you go to sleep. And the next important point is about hydration. Anything bubbly, anything carbonation can worsen the symptoms. Alcohol is a strict no-no. On the contrary, if you drink a lot of water, it will help in digestion. It will actually improve your heartburn symptoms as well. If you walk towards the water doctor, you don't have to meet the actual doctor. And sometimes if your clothes are very, very tight and that can trigger these reflux symptoms as well. After seeing this suggestion, my loyal subscriber Subramani is asking his parents to buy clothes for him because parents buy always loose clothes. And the biggest mistake is smoking. Smoking increases the risk of esophageal cancer and if you have heartburn to start with, it might expedite the progression to esophageal cancer pretty fast. My patient Aro Kizami accompanies his manager for a smoke during break to get good rating in his appraisal. Now I am conducting a health risk appraisal for both of them. And when it comes to foods to avoid, it is mainly individualized. Few studies suggest that citrus fruits, tomatoes, onion, garlic, chocolate, coffee can trigger heartburn but it differs from individual to individual. In general, we say to avoid ultra processed food, highly fried foods, highly fatty foods because your door might not like it. And when it comes for foods to include, I always recommend three different categories of foods to all my heartburn patients. One is yogurt. We love yogurt because yogurt is a good source of good gut bacteria and eventually it will decrease the inflammation in your body. Sometimes it can soothen the irritated esophagus and can be a good source of protein as well. 
And number two, fiber rich foods like whole grains, nuts and seeds can give you so much fiber that you will not eat that much and also it will keep your stomach full absorbing the acids or decreasing the acid exposure. And the third category is water foods and out of this my two favorites are watermelon and cucumber. It gives you so much of hydration and I have seen in my practical experience that this has decreased heartburn in few of my patients as well. If you like watermelon, if you like cucumber, that might be the way to go. And the most important question I get is who needs endoscopy like a camera test to look into your esophagus? Not everybody, only if you have alarming symptoms like difficulty in swallowing, weight loss or any other significant symptom that your doctor might think that you might need this camera test. And the camera test can also determine if you are having the symptom for a longer time, more than 5 years, more than 10 years, how much damage has happened in the lower esophagus. Tell me in the comment section what foods will cause heartburn for you. Please tell me in the comment section if you want to talk more about GI topics, remember one belly at a time it is absolutely important. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.